And welcome back to the World Championship Series Europe. Round of 16, Group C. Game one is done. And Grubby, despite having the 1-0 lead, goes down 2-1 to the incredible manner, who really is on a nice hot streak right now for his new team, Team Liquid. Not quite so new these days. Um, Apollo's with me. Game one, difficult to predict. We knew some said grubby, some said manner. In the end, manner prevails. Do you think that was about right on balance? Yeah, I have to agree um, with, with people that thought that manner would win. Um, manner, for me, feels the a little bit of a better player than Grubby currently. I guess that, that you've got to think about we don't get to see Grubby a lot, so that yeah. plays into factor. But Mana is on the rise. Mana is a player who is meant to be going further than just the round of 16, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at all four players in Group C, if you're just joining us and you missed our first game. The uh, four players in Group C include Grubby, who 4 0 his group in the round of 32. It also includes First. He also uh, 4 0 his groups in the round of 32. And then on top of that, we have Manor, who's already won his opening game, and Gold, and those four players in the group. When you when you look at the group, uh, Ben and I discussed it a little bit earlier on. We said it's probably the most open group of the four. It's not that open, perhaps, because I know you have a very strong opinion that First is the absolute favourite in this group. He's going far uh, this, this whole season. Um, I, as soon as I... See, saw that he got into the round of 32, knew his practice regime and knew how his results on ladder and in the training house were. I said, this guy's going far. Um, in my fantasy picks for, for the ESL Gaming Fantasy team, it Did is you put him first in? and Stardust. Really? They are my two picks to go really deep in this tournament. So no Europeans whatsoever, no, you traitor. Sorry. I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta get the results in. I gotta I look good. Go to fantasy.esl, by the way, fantasy.eslgaming.com and you too can play the fantasy game for WCS as well. Um, Brackets now. Let's take a look at the brackets and show you the uh, way it's going so far. Manor, of course, advancing through to the upper bracket final, courtesy of that 2-1 win against Grubby. Golden will now take on first. It's ZVP. Um, it's going to be interesting for a number of reasons. These two players may not have had uh, similar roads, should we say, but they are both brand new to Premier League. Both came through qualifiers. Golden was 10-0 and zero in those qualifiers. He looked absolutely unstoppable. But when you look yeah. back at his history, what he's probably most well known and remember for his home story Cup 5 back in 2012, where he was fourth, uh, and also Red Bull Training Grounds 2013, where he won as well, before it became you know the kind of premier tournament that it is now. But since then, WCS seems to have been a bit of a pain in the backside for him, frankly. He's, he tried to get into WCS career, had two seasons in Challenger. He then tried to get into WCS America and didn't manage to get through the qualifiers. Why is he able to come to Europe and do a 10-0 and make the round of 16? So I look at Golden as, if you think back to playing football manager or any of the older games back in the day, when you made Michael Owen leave Liverpool to go to a Division II team or something, you put him in your team and he destroys that league. But then eventually you rise up in the leagues and then he's not as good as he was at the start. I'm, so I'm, I look at it. Yeah, follow me, Red Eye. Follow me. No, no, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. So Golden's my Michael Owen, who was obviously okay. playing in the Premier League in Korea with all the big dogs, then played in America, which is still quite difficult because the qualifiers are difficult, then came to Challenger for Europe, which is easier than both, and is now back into Premier League, kind of at a level that's not quite the original, but close to the original. That's the reason why okay, I, I, there's I, like one person out there is like, yeah! You know? Yeah, that one person got it. Right, <laughs> is one of my friends called Miles Jacobson who runs SI Games that make the Football Manager series. If he's tuned in yeah, right now, yeah. then he'll totally understand that. For everyone else out there, I can't translate. So, It'll take me too yeah. long. TLDR. Um, <laughs> TLDR. Right. Golden is better than Challenger. He's meant to be in the Premier League, which is why I went 10-0. All right, okay. Uh, we're into the map vote right now, as you can see on your screen. All the and Habitation Station have gone. And we'll find out which other two will join them uh, momentarily. We'll also then talk about these players uh, individually as well. What, uh, what are you expecting from the map, Vitos? Uh, pretty much as you can see, really. Um, Habitation and Merry-Go-Round. Habitation's an awkward map because of the gold. It can be really funky to play. Um, Merry-Go-Round is a very open third base, very difficult to take. Altazim is a great remove. Frost is... Hmm. Um, We're going to see Waystation in here. It's only the second time we've had it. Might be map three, of course. Yeah, I don't mind this. Frost can be decent for Prodos um, if played out really, really well. And Waystation can, because it's not played very often and it is always vetoed from Protoss players usually, I like that Golden allowed that to stay in. 
Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting set of maps. So uh, we'll come to those in just a moment. We'll let the uh, commentators walk you through the map choices in a little bit more detail. Let's concentrate on these two players uh, first of all. So many puns with first tonight. Yeah, I'm just not going to be able to avoid them, am I? It's just not going to be uh, not going to be able to do it. Uh, so we'll start with Golden and take a look at him. As we said earlier on, non-qualifier in uh, WCS America, challenger in WCS Korea. Tonight he actually becomes the first player to play in all three regions, albeit not three Premier League regions. We've still yet to see that, but it's still that's still an interesting uh, an interesting fact over the five seasons, I think. Trying to look for the right region to get success in, and uh, this is his third attempt. Some say third time lucky, some say third time unlucky. What are you? Uh, yeah, we're going to find out. Uh, he's also with a German team right now. Alien Invasion, of course, uh, brought him into their uh, into their uh, team house in Duisburg in Germany. And uh, as we said already, first appearance in any Premier League across all the regions. Currently has a 15-9 win record in WCS matches but he, he is absolutely the underdog in this group seems strange to be talking about him in yeah. that, that way but I mean you could argue as Team Liquid did statistically the two Koreans should advance out of this group but it, it's not that straightforward really no I definitely look at Golden in this group as the outsider of all four um, may, maybe that's just because he plays Zerg I'm not sure but he has the capability to go all the way through if he beats first today he's unstoppable like if he beats my favourite he's going to go through no <laughs> doubt but I think this is going to be the hardest match and it will put the pace for the rest of the series for him, unfortunately. Okay, let's take a look at first. Uh, what isn't there to say about this young man? And he's still a young man, still only 21 years of age. 24-13 uh, win-loss record. And that's not just in WCS Europe. That's actually in WCS Korea. Obviously the hardest of the three regions. Season two finals as well. He finished in the top four. Not many remember the fact that he was one of the top players in that particular season finals. And uh, fifth in WCS career season two a year ago so he knows how to do this he's already been to the summit before he was a 2013 IEM champion as well been there done it knows how to do it and not only that his PVP is off the charts when it comes to success so everything seems to have lined up for first in this group yeah I, th I think this guy is going to go very far I think he challenges you know MC for the whole tournament to be fair um, I remember commentating him at MLG back in the days when he was getting multiple third place finishes. It, it, uh, you look at him and you don't think all the results he's achieved, he's actually achieved. He's just like another player in WCS Europe, but he's actually got so much behind him. And especially in season three in WCS Korea last year, like that result was remarkable, it was incredible. And I think that he can repeat a lot of good success here. Some would say an incredible miracle last year. Wow, you are full of I am, but no longer, of course. So what's, what's, going, what's going on with it? Why has no one come in for him? Why has no one said, hang on a minute, this, this, guy's, this guy's a champion. He, he needs to be picked up immediately. Why has no one done that? There is a lot of good players out there, and unfortunately, he doesn't seem to get lucky on the side of being picked up by a team or, or a sponsor. Um, but trust me, uh, you will probably want this guy on your side come the next couple of seasons. He's going to do very well this year. All right, thanks very much, Apollo. We are now going to go over to our commentary team for game number two here between First and Golden. Here's the Muslim and Kolaris. We had our Europeans representing the first series. Now we have our Koreans who are going to battle it out against one another to see who moves on to the winner's game. It's going to be first versus Yoda. Not Yoda, Golden. First versus Golden, Why yes. Why did I say Yoda? <laughs> it's usually against Yoda. Like, they were teammates yeah. and stuff. You see those guys together. But Golden <laughs> against first. This is a pretty insane matchup, actually. Like, uh, I didn't realize they played before, and it was 1-1 between them. Like, I've just been listening to Apollo say how good first is the whole week, mm -hmm. and how, like, he really banks on him, and rightly, rightly so, because he is absolutely solid, but going 1-1 against Golden, this obviously isn't going to be as easy as we thought. All right, well, let's get into it. Our next series of the night, as we have first and Golden fighting off against one another. Up to the top left-hand corner, we have our red Protoss. He hails from South Korea, it is first. And down to the bottom right hand corner, we have our second South Korean representative here in Group C, representing Alien Invasion, it is Golden. I love that little alien logo he has flying, floating next to his hatchery. What an odd one to have, but uh, very fitting for his team name. That's true, that's true. I'm also a backer of first, man. I gotta admit, I too have him in my ESL fantasy team. Um, he is a monster. Ever since he had those runs over in WCS Korea, where he really showed his proper form, like, 
let's see him rise back to that. Let's see him kind of attain those heights once again. An absolute force to be reckoned with here in this season. Yeah, I mean, when he was in Korea and he started doing very well, he was one of the newer players on the scene. But I remember as soon as people started seeing that guy play, he started taking names and names without cheesing, just solid, solid macro play, great micro, great understanding of the game. And when you watch him play, it's very obvious why he's so good. He just doesn't make mistakes. Golden here with a very early drone scout, though. So whether he's just doing that to block the Nexus or scout, do, unsure of what first is going to do. Where play by him? Yeah, just making sure he knows exactly what's going on. Sees the probe heading down there. So an attempt at a Nexus first, which will be blocked for quite a while here by Golden to start things off whilst he takes Hatch first back at home. This makes me think that he's done some studying of first because mm -hmm. Nexus first, is it an obvious build? Well. Yeah, Ooh. sorta, but if they don't do it and you go for this drone scan, they do something relatively normal, like a gateway first or what have you, then uh, you're kind of wasting those minerals from that scout, but he knows exactly what he's doing, and uh, he threw first off a little bit already in this series. Yeah, and also as a disclaimer, we are allowed to say first in this matchup without referring to the player. We are allowed to do that because without being able to do that, our brains will explode, so... I'm, I'm just covering that for us, Ben. That's that's really important. Thank All right. you. I do appreciate it. <laughs> Here, Golden, with this drone scout, is going three hatch before pool. He's seen what he's doing. He forced his opponent not to go forge first, given that he made a pylon in the base and went for a gateway and even delayed the Nexus. And now he's very safe because there's never going to be a cannon rush. So this, so far, is pretty standard for both of them. But... I kind of like how Golden's done this. Yeah, I think it's worked out all right for him. Um, he will have to be, of course, wary because the gateway was very early in essence because it was the gateway and then into the Nexus because of how he delayed it. So the Zealot will come out and you know, if first is able to catch, kind of get whiff of all of this, maybe he'll start poking and prodding. But aside from that, he'll be looking right and dandy, Will, uh, will Golden certainly will. And here, just keeping this probe out on the map, there's no lings out on the field that can chase him down, and he knows that because the pool is not ready yet. Golden's macro is going to be owning pretty soon. Mm. He's going to have two queens building. He's going to set up a third one upon that third hatch, finishing two. And so far, everything's normal. An early Zealot and a fairly early Stalker following up for first. wonder if he's going to pile on some aggression with that combo. Well, one thing's for sure, he's all gonna, still going to start that wall off there as well. Um, curious to see what he's going to do in terms of tech. Did you manage to catch uh, first versus Snoop from the Intel Extreme Master Shenzhen qualifiers? I did. At least the final game on Overgrowth, which was insane. Okay. The two. There was that one, but the one I want to come back to is actually the first game where first showed how insane he can actually play this matchup. Like, truly crazy, crazy kind of styles. Taking, well, on, on Waste Station at the time, taking the island base, but then going forwards with uh, Warp Prism Aggression anyway, um, and always being in his opponent's face. That's the kind of thing I'm expecting out of first here. Always being in his opponent's face. Forge is going to come down to begin things. And Forge in a fairly hidden location, too. Usually you see mm. Protoss use that as part of their wall, uh, and his wall is very much so open, but he knows his opponent isn't capable of rushing him anytime soon. Here, a few Lings do try and see through. Is that Ling going to get into the main base? Uh. Whether it sees that Forge or not is a totally different story, but he is running around here. Still can't deny if the Sentry and Mothership Core go in the right direction, but they decide to go ring around the Rosie and oh, the Ling pulls back, so... Does not see it, but yeah. very fast plus one. Immediately upon that Forge finishing, starts that plus one. Stalker playing aggressive here too, does take out a drone. Nice little pick off for him there. All right, so as this develops, it's, it's always nice to see first kind of do these kinds of things. Oh, but that Ling, he's going to spot that so fast. That's really good for Golden to start things off. It's very good for Golden. He didn't even reveal that he saw it. He yeah. the Ling to try and chase down the probe. So first upon landing that third, you think, ah, I'm kind of getting away with it. Yeah. 19 drones Jeez. at once. Well, <laughs> as soon as you see that third, he knows that his opponent isn't going to be piling on aggression. So yeah. nice move by him. And that's that's the two options you have, right? In Golden's shoes, who you know only really just got those gases properly, properly flowing. It's... Well, you know, I don't really have the full capabilities of pressuring onto that third base, so I'm just going to power out my economy really fast, really strongly. A little bit supply blocked, but that will be alleviated very quickly here. As long as he lands the injects, the supply blocks don't really mean an awful amount, you know, because mm. once 
once you're unsupply blocked, you can resume unit production here. 12 links on the way, a couple of drones. Link speed as well with a Roach Warren. So Golden's turning into a pretty normal pace of play, but with a 64 drone count already, and we're eight minutes into the game, that's huge. Yeah, he's really been doing well there. Uh, so, And this is one way that you can try and deal with first. If you can get away with these drones and then set yourself up for the better economy later on, and then you're going to be okay. But first is always already setting up pylons to go for pressure, which has been spotted very, very meticulously here by well-placed overlords on the high ground. Ooh, does catch that probe and will kill this pylon or probably cancel it. So yeah, cancel here. So reinforcement-wise, first attack is delayed and he does want to be aggressive here. He has a lot of sentries on the map, which mm -hmm. I can tell you do very, very well against Zerglings in these numbers, but Golden just smacking down Roaches very, very soon. Uh, he's got to be careful because he's trying to cut off reinforcements, but that was spotted pretty early. Um, but the sentries alone can't combat these Lings and Roaches. It's going to be very, very difficult unless it's amazing force fields to the point where nothing's firing at all. Um, but this, I feel that this is designed by first to kind of stop his opponent from building too many drones, making units, units, units. And he hasn't been doing it. He's only been building two drones this whole time. But he was already at the 64 to begin with anyway, so his economy is still very, very powerful. You're totally right. This whole time, and here we have Lings running by into the third. Will he be able to do much? There is a cannon there that can't be killed. A nice warp in two with the Zealot. Um, but this army's scary. You have Ooh. to take this seriously. But yeah, he's been producing probes the whole time. So this isn't a ballsy all-in by first by any means. It's a solid build, but this army's scary. Yeah, especially with the position he's now oh. found himself in because he can do things like this with force fields that are going to keep going down. Extra stalkers are on the way. Time warp has been used for that mothership core, but there is still energy there to be able to recall if he needs it, which is important as well. Actually, you know, this gateway force, it could just kill get a Golden off if he's not careful. A huge force is like marching forward, and this isn't even an all-in. He's getting plus two behind this. Lots of pylons and Golden. He's trying to hang on here, but the supplies are getting so close. He was very wisely focusing down on that mothership call, making it harder for it to get forwards with those queens, uh, and he eventually will deal with this. That poor queen. It's almost Sparta style being kicked down that hole there. Hanging on for its life. But Jeez. yeah, great first push out by first. His economy goes rather untouched by that Ling run by. 57 probes to the 66. And Golden, he has to continue building units because he doesn't really have that many on the field right now. And as I said at the beginning, man, this is first. He will be in your face all game long. How is Golden going to be able to deal with this? How is he going to cope under the pressure that we've already seen exuded from first? And here it is again. He's going to take down that hatchery. And those roaches just can't come forward because there's too many force fields available to him. We'll always cut them up. Yeah, and a couple of force fields plant there. Tried to catch a few roaches, gets a kill. But constant warpings by first. And now first takes a supply lead. Damage upgrades coming in too, pretty heartily. And Blink also, he's playing solid this game. And those roaches had to dive out of there once again. They don't want to be taking on anything in that area. 62 army supply to 64. So this is at a period in the game where ideally Zerg should be powering out army, army, army. And indeed he is, but it's being traded off, which is always slowing down uh, that progression up to a much higher supply count than the Protoss. And from here, First, I mean, if he finishes plus two and just goes up to plus three straight away with Blink available to him as well, this is so powerful. Making five cannons for defense here. So he knows that he's susceptible to counterattacks and just getting ready for that. So I like that kind of play. Or he's just scouted the Spire. I think he's just scouted the Spire and oh, hasn't actually seen the Spire. Maybe Whoa. he just anticipates it. But Golden's getting ready for the base trade here. Yeah. He recalled back though. He recalled everything back. So all of those spines, canceled. he has to cancel them. He's just, he canceled yeah. them instantly upon seeing that recall. So smart play. There's lots of games going on here. 13 Mutilus, 15 on the way. So Golden, he's getting ready for that next stage of the game. His fourth base is almost up, and he wants to keep first on his side of the map. So this army at the top right, he's circling around ready for counterattacks and yet again. Double Stargate now on the way for first, realizing that those Mutilisks will indeed be entering the fray and become a threat, uh, even though he hasn't actually seen the Spire fully during all of this. So he's still just anticipating his opponent's movement. Now he sees the Mutilisks in the middle of the map, though. That's very important. Uh, so he does have full confirmation. Certainly is important, and Golden's handling this very well, actually. While this Roach army will get flattened if it meets first, if it's meeting just cannons like this, it's going to do a great job. And first, he's in a bit of a pickle here. Yeah, he actually separated four stalkers off to the south, left those behind whilst recalling to defend. 
very, very good move here by First to try and go for some harassment and get some damage done during this defense. But Golden, likewise, you know, has been playing out well across his three bases. He's just never had really opportunity to get his fourth base really up and running. The, the, the fact that Golden stayed alive despite having seemingly a much weaker army the whole game is great credit to how, yeah. Golden, how well Golden knows this matchup. But now he has this huge army it's approaching plus three weapons upgrades, and that's so many stalkers. How do you really take that with what Golden has? Exactly. I mean, Roaches with very, very little upgrades aren't really going to do a whole lot. And then the Mutalisks themselves, they aren't full on f uh, fighting combat units. They're going to have to be going for the harassment. So once again, Golden is in, a, in his in essence, setting up for another counter attack and base trade. Oh, big Zealot Warp in here, but that was spotted with these Mutalists, so cleaning that up could be easy. But Golden goes straight for the throw. Kills the Mothership Core there, actually, too, I do believe. So here, it's getting down to a bit of a base trade situation yet again. Golden building so many spines. Yeah, Golden. Golden trying to hold on against all of this. First is getting his Fleet Beacon behind as well. So trying to get up to Anya Pulse Crystals for these Phoenix so he can trade off super efficiently against these Mutalists. There's not going to be any Corruptors coming out anytime soon, really. And if they do, they'll be in very small numbers. But all the Phoenix die. So he's going to be after relying on these Stalkers alone to bust and then eventually kill off the Flying Threat. Yeah, this is getting really tense here because Golden Supply is dwindling, but so is First. First doesn't really have enough Mutalists on the field to do anything. And what's the income tab at? So few drones and so few pros for both these players. Yeah, in the end, the supply count's getting pretty darn close. But again, there's still Phoenix now oh. on the way. He found extra money, just small snippets of gas really helping him out. And with Anion Pulse Crystals ever cl uh, closing in, that is the nail in the coffin for Golden. When that upgrade finishes, those Phoenix are going to be untouchable. Hectic ZVP to start off the series between these players. Great Phoenix Micro trying to keep these alive, and they will slowly pick apart these Mutas. And then the Roaches, well, when you have a lot of Stalkers still left on the field, they aren't going to do much. And Golden, he's losing his main. No mining left for him whatsoever. This army is just going to continue to fall. All right, well. Now with the Anion Pulse Crystals finished, these Phoenix are having the best time of their lives, not even getting touched at all. Uh, and the the base trade scenario here for Golden, <laughs> he doesn't even need to micro them back now, he just has overwhelming numbers. So all the Mutalisks are dead and it's up to Roaches now to conquer. This is, unless, unless he, he doesn't, he only has minerals for like an assimilator. Oh wait, he doesn't even have a probe. The so, well, the likelihood mm. that he's going to kill the Zerg faster than he's going to die is yeah. much higher. And these Phoenix can never be dealt with. There's still a lot of Protoss buildings on the map. So, ah, this looks very bad for Golden. But, you know, he, he went against a really hardcore three base push strategy and wasn't quite prepared for it. But his overall strategy and idea of how to keep in this game and how to win this game was very solid. Yeah, just not enough units here for Golden to really commit to the, the attempt at trying to kill everything off at this point. There you go, GG. Scrappy but great in the end as we have first taking game number one here in this best of three. And even though the supplies were close, first controlled that very well. Just the fact that he knew what Golden was heading for just by his army movements, and he said to himself, this guy's going for Mutas, because that's his only chance to win this game. It's the only way that he can possibly get me out of position, because he cannot beat my army. I've kept him on three bases and three bases only, meaning his gas count is insanely low. Um, and he, he predicted Mutas before he even, even knew about the Spire, just based on army movements. So Thirst, very smart play by him. And you know, now that I think about it, this is a slight tangent to what you were just saying here, so I apologize for going on it, but... It makes a whole lot of sense to me now why Waystation was never vetoed by first, considering the game that I saw in Intel Extreme Master Shenzhen qualifiers from him, because he looked like he had a command over that map as a Protoss, like very, very few Protoss do. Um, so that's something to consider if we even get there, because right now it's going to be overgrowth of our second map. And first is leading 1-0, and he could quite easily play a very, very similar style here. Uh, it's not too bad to actually go for third base. Can be hunkered down with a good wall for first if he wants to go for it. And yeah, if you get the close positions on Waystation also, the fact that he is so good with Phoenix and relies on them quite a lot, uh, even just his regular openings, taking that third base on the island. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
the idea that your normal third is so open doesn't matter for a player like first because he can just take the island and totally ignore that. Exactly. All right, let's get into it then. Game number two as we have spawning down to the bottom left hand corner as our red Protoss. It is first. And up to the top right hand corner, we have our blue Zerg representing Alien Invasion. It's golden. Very, very stocky play out of first in that first map. Um, going for the fast forge, instant plus one, and then got together 12 sentries and pushed out across the map. Even if it wasn't to do direct damage by killing a base or so, because it didn't kill a base. Forced so many units out that were not good against that composition, which was very, very smart by first. And beyond that, probed up like a madman, was getting very, very good tech out with plus two and blink, even the robo just remained in control that whole time and keeping the sentries alive after the push. You have constant hallucinations that you can constantly scout at your opponent, whether he's taken a greedy fourth or even his army or his tech. It was very smart play in here, opening up with a forge this time. Yeah, I think this might have already been in anticipation for what was happening in the first game. Um, and assuming that it was going to come again. But, you know, Golden sees that. He got that with the drone scout anyway, so he starts his spawning pool. Uh, so in the end, it's it's so funny how that works out. From from game number one being how it was for against a uh, triple hatch uh, and attempt at Nexus first to now forge against spawning pool because of their, sp uh, because of their scouting timings. It's... It's unusual for a Zerg to go out and drone scout, but, mm. you know, despite the economic disadvantage you get being out on the map for a good minute or so with that drone, it does mean that you don't lose straight away to any sort of cannon rush. You know exactly what your Protoss opponent's up to. Oh. And you can do things like three hatch before pool like you did the previous game in here. Sees the forge and drops down the pool instantly. So, safe play by Golden. All right. So, yep, Nexus is going to be started up before Hatchery, which is nice here for first because of that block that he did get with the pylon. Uh, and poor little drone gets tasered on the way out. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa, that probe stopped chasing for yeah. just a second, but that was enough for Golden to whip out that, that natural that he's uh, been longing for for quite a while now. Yeah, I was quite surprised that he stopped chasing there. He could have blocked that for just a little bit longer, but anyway, it's by the by now. He was probably anticipating Zerglings being out very fast and uh, eventually on the field looking for that probe, which he's trying to hide down at the Golden for now. Yeah, that probe wants to remain on the map for as long as possible. And with those Zerglings of Golden, they are searching and hunting for that guy. And uh, one Zergling does find him, so that probe, not destined for this world, it looks like. That's exactly what I would have said. Ah. When you were saying that sentence, I was like, not destined for this world. In my head, that was brilliant. It just makes sense. That it sentence. does. So I'm glad uh, we're both on the same wavelength. <laughs> but here, everything's going as planned for both of these players. First knows he's up against three hatch. And uh, Golden, because of that drone that was on the map, he knew he was up against Forge, Nexus, and everything's standard. These guys are going into a normal game, which is what they've both been training for. Yeah, Zella in addition to that wall, just to seal that off nicely. And uh, Simon Ed's caught just a little bit out of range of that Overlord. It means it would have to poke in if you want to see any Chrono Boosts going down onto it, which you can't really effectively uh, come off that perch. Uh, but Golden has control of the map. He has control of the Watchtowers. He's owning that little location up. I'm wondering what First does. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a greedy play from First again. But again, he has so many tricks up his sleeve. A second Zealot, huh. This is a map where it's very easy for Protoss to hide their tech. You hide it in between the main and natural. There's a huge spot of ground in which getting an Overlord in there is so hard. And right in that spot, we do have a Stargate going down, which there's no way for that to be scouted there. It's a solid position. You can even get it on the high ground, and you can't get an Overlord there. So uh, nice play by first. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult. He will try and attempt to scout into the main with that Overlord on the left-hand side, but he's going to have to go very, very deep uh, to try and spot what he needs to. As for now, Double Zealot moves out. Uh, this is pretty annoying. It will force extra. The Zerglings are already on the production tab because, I mean, one Zealot really doesn't force that many extra Zerglings, but two, it's a, it's a little bit of a threat with the Mothership Core. And these are first Zealots too. Mm -hmm. And with the Mothership Core as well, uh, but they're just... Upon scouting it, Golden built a few extra, but not taking it too seriously, which is correct. This Ooh. Overlord, though, going for quite the run by, and we'll see absolutely everything here. So, and an Oracle on the map, 
He is quite the explorer. Did well for himself. I've seen MC do something very similar to this. Uh, he did a lot in the frag bike tournament in which he just pile on aggression at that third base and take out his Zerg opponent almost immediately. Spore Crawler's going up for Golden upon seeing this. It's the correct reaction because even if it isn't an Oracle, the Phoenix can harass your mineral line something wicked. Yes, they can. This Oracle is going to head over to the main and start poking around, but at least for the cost of this first spots the layer timing. That's really all he's going to get here. With the Void Ray on the way as well, it looks like he wants to claim a third. Oh, he already is doing uh, off the back of that. And it's always a nice defensive unit to start things off. Third base going up with the Oracle just scouting everything. Can't really deal damage, but the Oracle's so fast that it didn't take any damage either. And Golden, upon seeing this, what he's up against, 15 drones all at once here. Oh, that is quite... Wow, okay, he put down the Revelation upon seeing... So he's going to see everything in the main base, but that was as four drones popped out. I wonder if, upon seeing that, he kind of dr regretted the decision and would have rather killed the four drones. Yeah, perhaps. That's actually a really good point there, the Muslim. Uh, we have now the Roach Warren being added on behind all of that. Again, it was spotted by the Oracle. So very, very good intel. Very good information he has available to him. And the fourth hatchery up to the top left-hand corner, which is going to be he's going to be hard-pressed to actually pressure that for quite a while. And a Void Ray on the map. Uh... You know, Void Rays can clean up a lot of stuff. They're also very good against Roach Aggression and all these Overlords yeah. that are dotted about will be killed. And uh, he's going for a pretty greedy play. His third's already up. It's nine minutes into the game. This Oracle's just running about, checking all the production lines, checking the units as well. And uh, there's no threat for him, so rightly so. That third base will go unthwarted. Yeah, I mean... There may be the possibility here that first tries to sneak a probe out onto the left-hand side of this map to then eventually start warping in zealots over there to harass the fourth base. But for now, there's not really tons of room for him to do anything. He's playing his own game back there. At least he saw the Spire, though. That's a good start for first, although still going for the Robo. A few more gateways with Blink, so... Hmm. Well, he already has one Stargate up. The, idea, the yeah. fact that he's not making... Oh. I've seen quite a lot of games where the Spire goes up and then we see Protoss overreact. I even saw a mana game very recently um, oh. in which, yeah, seeing that Spire, you kind of hope that they do overreact and go Phoenix. Even if you have just too, too many Phoenix on the field, it's a good move. But eventually, you can put it to use. We see lots of Lings on the map, no Roaches really. And uh, first, whipping out great upgrades and yet again, going for plus two and Stalkers. Yeah, good denial of creep as well. I've seen that method used with even two Oracles uh, instead of an Oracle and a Void Ray, but that Void Ray does give the option to clean up the Overlords on the uh, side that you were mentioning before. So it's a good multi-purpose unit, and it also serves quite the purpose later on in the, in the fight because they have to do a lot of damage to Void Rays. They're a pretty good unit. So we have now Mutalisks on the way. I'm not sure it's fully twigged that there is this big committal coming with the muters just yet. I'm not sure either. Like, this is a pretty strong force for first that is on Golden's side of the map, but if it gets caught out by Lings and muters, Golden does see exactly where it is and doesn't really want to... Oh, the muters have right. been revealed now, so first knows what he's up against here. Doesn't want to get caught out. Yeah, it has to recall, really, I think. There's no way you're going to get away from the majority of this. He's actually going to take the engagement for a we second. We say there's no way, but their Jeez. first just creates a very efficient wall with force fields and uh, gets away, and the damage is going to be done. He was distracting with the army, but Golden's seen this. He yeah. knows what's coming, and he is reacting very well. Muta's on the map, and they're all over it. That's crazy, the reaction timing there. First, suddenly a path is a dead end, and uh, he's going to use that warp prism, I think, if the Mutalists continue on. It's very, very low. Zealots didn't get a huge amount done there either. So that was a good cleanup, but all of this is buying time for First to appropriately transition onto his next step. Right, and he's got a lot of gas, so doing this isn't even a huge hindrance to his play. Lots of gateways available. He even has a really nice Stalk account available, so even delaying until... Oh, that's 18 muters, actually. That's a lot of muters mm. ready to deal damage anywhere, and Golden's just constantly expanding behind this, so his gas income's going to go through the roof pretty soon. Free Phoenix on the way at any time. If that Oracle manages... To, oh, I was about to say, if it lands a revelation on those muters, but it already has done, uh, so he can keep tabs on them quite nicely here uh, and shoot these guys away. Uh, right now, the Mutalisks, I mean, the, he has to be anticipating the level of transition from the Stargates coming out, but he hasn't got full information. So 
they, those Phoenix are being banked up. And once these Mutalisks start really posing that threat on home soil, that's when he's going to unleash the Tide of Phoenix. This Oracle does get away, so he lives a long time. That Oracle's been on the map for a long time, and despite no kills, got out a lot of information. So that Oracle has been worth its weight in gold for sure. Phoenix production is at an all-time high here. Three Phoenix at a time, air upgrades coming through, and the range upgrades. So this air army of Golden is going to be meeting a very, very solid anti-air army at first, and he has 50 supply to use to deal with it. Yeah, I, I like how Golden got that fifth base up here at the time he did. It was quite a while ago now, if we look at it. It's not being fully mined from, but... Well, he now has to deal with this army of first. With Anion Pulse Crystal Crystals finishing up, those Phoenix feel very, very confident about moving out to the middle. But there are Corruptors now on the way as well, which is why he's probably keeping the majority of those Stalkers with him. So he can try and deal with it that way, but he's going to be forced back for the defense. I'm kind of scared for Golden a little bit here. He's at 200 supply. His army doesn't really get much stronger at this point, but it doesn't feel like a rock-solid army, especially when you see this huge armada of Phoenix flying across the map with great upgrades incoming. Yeah, the Stalker's going to try and deal with those Corruptors for just a little bit, but as are the Phoenix as well. They can attack whilst moving, guys, so they're pretty good. Yeah, um, and look at first here. He's dancing with these Corruptors. They're barely even getting hits off. Yeah, it's a little bit sad for him at this point. Oh, ooh, the Stalker on the right-hand side, they could have intercepted a lot of that, uh, but he's just looking to power through the middle of the map by looks of things. Um, pathogen Glass is on the way for Fungals to try and lock all of this down, which is a great choice, but if he doesn't actually find the time to do it, then he could be in dire straits. Golden's army is so small, he has far too many drones on the map to really deal with this. 90 drones, Whoa. and at this mineral count, doesn't matter if you get it really high. Oh, these Phoenix getting caught out just for a second there, but there's so many. They're dealing so much damage here, and chasing them down is not really what, what you want to do. They outrange every unit you have. Yeah, the next big move here is going to be those that pathogen glands and the Phoenix, uh, the infestors, because if they can land the fungal growth, the appropriate fungal growth, and kill off the, all of these Phoenix, then that'll be great. But for now, first is controlling this great. A Golden was not keeping his mutalisks behind the wall of Corruptors, so they were being traded off blow for blow, and first has taken a significant and supply lead. Look, let's load up that resources lost tab because that really tells the story of this game. Oh. 4,000 resources lost against the almost 13,000 of Golden. And now Golden's army is getting absolutely destroyed. 500 APM for first here. He is decimating Gold. He's tearing him out from the inside. Oh, great play by first. Yeah, he's playing this really, really well. He just forces his opponent into bad situations. And unfortunately for Golden right now, he hasn't found the room to really do anything. And even the force field deny any of those links from really coming in. They could have tried to go in, but there's still so much firepower here for him left over. Stalker's just going to deal with these Corruptors where they see fit. And this has been a dismantling oh, in essence. An aggressive blink there into Zerglings, which seemed bad. And GG is called, but then force fielding off the Zerglings. Wow. That was very impressive by first. Such efficient play by him. Didn't look weak at any point. Knew exactly his point A to point B. And uh, Golden, he went up to a very, very high drone count, but couldn't do anything with it. First did not give him the time. And this is, you know, one of the reasons why Apollo and I kind of favor this guy for going far. First is the kind of guy that has come here to conquer Europe. Back in Korea, he was taking down players, you know, at the height of their performances, people like Hiver, people like Symbol in there when he was extremely good against Protoss players. And th this is first. This is a guy that is very, very scary, not only in this group, but this entire tournament. You know, Golden's given a bit of a smile there and a bit of a head nod, kind of like, oh, you know, that guy's freaking good. But yeah. yeah, you're totally right. You get Koreans that have been GSL champions coming over to Europe, and they do well. But first is, is of that caliber where... He's not just going to do well. He's going to he's going to be something. He's going to make something of himself because even in Korea, he was doing extraordinarily well, which is not something that just anybody can do. Mm. So Seeing this kind of play out of him, it's great. It's great to see. Yeah, a fifth place uh, during WCS career is no small feat. And no, then even all. being knocked out by Jadong, I believe, during the Season 2 finals. Uh, you know, uh, in the end, it's Jadong, guys. You know, he does pretty well himself. Uh, but first, man, yeah, that was a that was a very, very strong first initial series, at least. And we're going to find out what he's going to be doing in PvP after our interview with the man himself, Mr. First. Thanks very much. Yes, with first, congratulations. Uh, very straightforward game. Um, from your point of view, was did everything go the way you thought it would go and the way that you planned? 
생각대로 경기가 잘 풀렸는지 다. 첫 번째는 좀 이런 스튜디오에서 하는 경기가 진짜 오랜만이어서 좀 긴장했던 것 같고 두 번째는 생각한 것대로 잘 됐던 것 같아요. Uh, to be honest, in the first game I was uh, uh, yeah, kind of nervous because it was uh, it is a, like a really time uh, really I had a really long break since I uh, played in a offline studio, so uh, it was kind of weird. But in the second game, I think uh, everything well. Went well. Okay. You, have, you obviously have a lot of experience with the WCS and uh, Code S last year at GSL. How does this compare for you? You said you were nervous at the first time. Were you were you nervous in Korea when you played there? 한국에서도 이제 큰 대회들을 많이 했었는데 어, 그때와 지금이랑 어, 다른 점이 있다면 뭐가 있을까? 전 저는 이상하게 한국 대회에서 엄청 긴장을 하고 해외 대회에서는. 좀 그렇게 긴장 안 하는 편이한 것 같아서 큰 차이라고 하면 아무래도 해외에서 긴장을 좀 덜하는 것 같아. Uh, compared to Korea, uh, actually, uh, I was very, very nervous in uh, the tournaments uh, when I played in Korea, and actually, uh, I'm a bit less nervous here in uh, Europe when I play tournaments here. Okay, is that is that to do with the the crowd or you know pressure from other players or the type of players that you're playing with? Mm. 그 이유가 있다면 모르겠어요. 제가 그냥 게임할 때 뭔가 한국에서 있으면 게임을 하면 뭔가 시선이 뭔가 너무 저한테 몰리 뭐 그러니까 몰입된다 해야 되나? 그런데 그런데 해외는 뭔가 그 시선이 뭔가 긴장되는 그런 게 없는 것 같아요. Uh, it's hard to explain but I think um, when I play in Korea a lot of people uh, look at me and uh, kind of uh, hope me to win. So uh, I get kind of nervous by it. But I think uh, when I play in Europe, there are not so many people who look at me and uh, think I will win or something like that. Okay, well, I can tell you that Europe has a lot of uh, first fans. There are a lot of first fans in Europe, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Two of them are in this studio, both uh, Apollo and Kalaris have you as their favourite to win the whole of WCS Europe. Does that kind of pressure help you or hurt you? Um, I don't have a lot of pressure in Europe, but there are two fans in the studio. Two fans are Apollo and Kalaris. I think they have a win of WCS in the first fans. Do you think it's going to be a good thing or a good thing? I think it's going to be a good thing. 크게 긴장 안될것 같아. Yeah, I think uh, it will help me, give me confidence, and uh, won't make me nervous. Right. He's cool as a cucumber. His first, you're not going to get much more out of him because there's just nothing coming out there. He's ice cold. He's like the ice man of Korea, and he is through to the upper bracket final, which we're not going to have just yet. Of course, we've changed our format around a little bit, and he will now have a break before he takes on Mana in the upper bracket final. Before we get to that, though, let's grab some analysis. Hello, Professor Clark here once again. Um, guys, the stocks are rising for the player named First. Um, definitely keep your eyes on him. That's where the money's going to be. Um, what I want to do now, though, is take a look through First's vision on how he kind of read the game, understood what to do step by step, and was always thinking one step of his opponent. So one of the biggest parts of the mid game was the Spire being placed down and first spotting it with the Oracle and we have the revelation to make sure he can always see it, well, see it longer than the Oracle could. Um, so let's continue on from here for a little bit. Let's play it times eight or so. Um, I think his first reaction is like timing. Timing, 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 timing. Timing's get a lot of success if I can move out and kill him before the mutes lists are ready. So plus two, blink. He stops pro production, he starts to move out here. Um, and if we pause it for a second, at this point, if you look in the middle, he's actually a quite confident at this point, I would say, really getting ready to go for it. But then he spots the Mutalists are already out. So what are you really hitting when it comes to a timing if the units you want to hit before they come out are already there and there's a lot of links to support them as well. So plan A scratched off and you have to start thinking about plan B. So if we play it from here, this is a really nice couple of force tools that actually allow him to get away with the units, not to lose anything. So if we pause it one more time, Plan B, Stargate time. So the plan from this point on is, all right, 
What I need to do, I cannot combat Muteless and Lynx with the army I have currently because I was trying for a timing before they are out. So if they are out, I need to now build about 10 to 12 Phoenixes, then I can combat them, then I can win. So that's what his thought process is. During that, as we play through, you have to defend all three bases and not take losses. If you take losses, you allow the other guy to, to kind of buy himself more time to think a move ahead of that as well. And then I think that we see Golden start to realize he goes in the main, no damage done, natural no damage done. Infestation Pit comes in because he knows that it's not working anymore and first is already building towards the counter. So they're always playing one step ahead. Golden's thinking about his next move and so on and so on. We see a really cool move now as the Phoenixes start to get ready. One delaying tactic, failed. Second delaying tactic inside the main, fails again. Fail, fail, fail. And because the Phoenixes now have range, there's a decent amount of them, He's defended on three bases and now he's looking for the kill. And the kill is very simple. You've got a lot of units and you've got the phoenixes that rule the skies. I love the separation of the phoenixes here. He sends his army off to God knows where, which is killing the fourth, killing the main, while knowing the lings aren't good enough on the ground and there's no support because Golden wasn't able to kick in with his follow-up reaction, which was meant to be infestors. So then we have there's the control of the sky, the blocking of the lings, the continuation pushes, and the supply count heavily in favor of first. Great crisis management, great ability to read into the game to know what he was going to do at the right times throughout. That was a quick overlook at how first was able to close up 2-0. So far undefeated this season. He's my pick. He should be yours as well. All right, Red Eye, take it away. Thank you very much, Sean. Yeah, awesome. Uh, as ever at the analysis table there, bringing us some uh, great breakdowns of how that first game went in game two. First, obviously, moves on to play Mana now. And before we get there, we are going to have the loser's bracket game between Grubby and Golden. Before that, though, we'll go to a break. And before that, I've got something special for you. We like to have a bit of fun here at WCS Europe. I think you know that by now. We're in our fifth season. And never more so than when you guys interact with us at home. So today, we didn't prompt you to do this. It just happened. I just want to throw this up on the screen. If you can show this to everyone at home. Yeah. So that kind of inspired us. And uh, <laughs> so I'm going to throw a little challenge down to you if you're out there right now and you're in Twitter land and you're very creative with Photoshop or whatever uh, particular tool you like using. What I'd like to do is... See if you can find any other product endorsements and change them by using any of the players or any of the staff here at WCS Round of 16. You can pick any way. You could use First. You could use, I don't know, Grubby. You could use Mana. You could use any of the players that have already gone through from the rest of uh, groups A and B, if you'd like, or anyone from tomorrow's Group D or any of the commentators, if you think it's more appropriate. And then post your pictures on Twitter. Use the hashtag hash WCS. We might find something in the cupboards to get these guys to sign and send it off to you for the favorite one that we pick at the end of the night so not a competition as such but just a bit of fun if you want to join in please feel free to do so use the hashtag hash wcs quick break now when we come back though it's time to find out which is the first player we lose from group c is it going to be golden or grubby